What's going on guys, this is Tyler with another video here today to recap the 2021 Sports Card National Show in Chicago. Guys, I got a lot of coverage here. I'm going to break down what I saw, what I bought, uh, and at the very end I'm going to go through all of my cards in detail, but I've got a lot of footage here that I want to share with you guys. Uh, a lot of cool stuff that I saw, and also some really cool trades, but also some grading mixed in. Um, so you're going to see some of that in this video, but I'm also going to have several other videos after this that show uh, some things more in detail. But really, I just want to show you guys what my experience was like. So I arrived Saturday night at midnight and hit the ground running. Uh, sorry, Friday night at midnight and hit the ground running. Um, landed, uh, got to the hotel around 1230, went down, printed all my forms out, and then immediately started talking to guys. It was awesome, guys. Literally thousands upon thousands of collectors, just like-minded people talking about cards for 48 hours for me. I had one goal in mind, and that was to get my cards graded. And as long as I could get those cards graded, I was going to be happy with the rest of the show. But trust me, guys, it absolutely delivered. So uh, right in the morning, right whenever the show started, my first objective was to bolt to the PSA booth. And the PSA booth was my first thing that I wanted to go to because I'd heard that submissions had been shut down. So I uh, went to the PSA booth and that was my first stop because I did not want submissions to be shut down and not be able to submit my cards. Bye-bye <laughs> cards. Hopefully you come back with nice grades. So after I got done with the PSA booth, I immediately went over to Beckett because I had two cards that I wanted to sub bump and then also three other cards that I wanted to RCR. So I dropped those things off. And after a couple of hours, I, I've really gone through both lines in 30 minutes. And by that time, I was done. Orders accepted, everything dropped off. And at that moment, I was able to go start browsing through the show. Mission accomplished, the rest of this is gonna be gravy. So now I'm gonna show you guys some of the cool stuff that I got to see. Guys, if there was a card out there that you wanted to see, more than likely this show had it. This card had so many high-end cards, and one of the key takeaways was really, this show was for the high-end collector. If you were going there and trying to trade mid-end cards, like $1,000 or less, there's not a lot of that stuff out there. We were talking five-figure cards and six-figure cards all over the show. So much eye candy, it was crazy. Now, one of the things I do recommend is, is if you're wanting to video some tables, absolutely ask the dealer first. I had asked a couple of people in the beginning and they said yes, but then after a couple of other tables that I went to, some folks said, please, no videoing. Uh, I asked obviously beforehand and they were very respectful. So one thing to take away is ask people before you start shooting their, their tables. When you go to the place that's built to make you lose money and you don't lose all of it. I did witness something amazing. Old man, probably. Yeah. Just, I mean, this ball thing is cheering. Probably oh, lost 12 kids. Just, I mean, he like lost a bunch, pulled out this like, envelope. Good for him. If he had fun, why not? Can't take it with you. This is one damn nasty case. I appreciate that, man. A lot of years of old and strong and being a pain in the ass. I don't say. You got, you, got diamond, you got diamond hands. Yeah. Or just stubborn, probably a combination of both. No, well, you can buy your island, so there you go. take your island. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, guys, I've only been at the show for an hour so far, and I wanted to get my thoughts on what's going on at the show. There are a million people here. So my strategy whenever I first got here was to go straight to PSA's booth. It is unbelievable how organized that booth is. Literally got in and out in five minutes. I dropped off 14 cards across two different orders, um, including a crossover. So I uh, should get that crossover result back in a couple of hours, and then the other ones when we get back tomorrow. But then I went over to Beckett's uh, table, and I was in line for literally like 45 minutes. It was insane how long I was in line there for. Dropped off two orders, including a crossover that I'm hoping to bump, and then also three other cards that I'm getting RCR that I'm going to hopefully get gym and then get them slabbed. So been here for an hour. Honestly, I've gotten everything done that I needed to get done. I was so worried I wasn't going to be able to get these cards graded. But I have everything dropped off, so hopefully we get some PSA 10s here soon. Now I'm gonna go dumpster dive it, see if I can find me some good stuff. All right. So immediately after uh, walking through the, the show, I knew that I was going after a couple of prospects, uh, Bobby Witt Jr. and Anthony Volpe for the Yankees, and I stumbled across one of these cool guys, a dealer's named Kyle. Kyle actually is a subscriber of the channel, watches me, um, which was really, really awesome. Awesome to meet this guy. Walked across his uh, table and I found a Bobby Witt Jr. card that I really, really wanted, um, but I hadn't walked across the entire show. Um, so I stopped by his booth, saw the card, saw the price, had a conversation about it, walked away from the table did a couple laps for about an hour and was like you know what i gotta buy this card so i went back to his table because other people were also asking about it and then i pulled the trigger and here i want to show kyle um, just to give him some uh, marketing and also really thankful for him uh, being a subscriber to the channel and also being a watcher so uh, definitely appreciate this kyle what's your name again my name's kyle with uh, kk sports cards i own kk nice. sports cards out of tampa florida we do psa and sgc group submissions yeah, no, I just love the hobby and getting out here and meeting people. Awesome. Well, how's the show going so far? It's been fantastic. I bought a uh, trout bowman from Blue Auto. Owned it for 25 minutes before reselling it. A Blue Auto? 2009? Oh, yeah. Oh. Nice. All right. Some big clips like that. Very cool. Awesome. Well, I'm just capturing this video. I just did a deal with him for this orange refractor uh, for $5,000. So, uh, awesome. So at this point, I had finally arrived at the show. I made my first big purchase, and this made me feel a part of this community where I actually spent $5,000 on a card. I was like, all right, I've got this monkey off my back. I'm ready to go out here and buy some more stuff. So I immediately started looking for more cards uh, and anything that caught my eye, nothing in particular, just more Bobby Witt Jr., more Anthony Volpe, and anything else that you know really caught my eye. Next, I came across a dealer who had my PC item, which I'm not going to show you guys until the end of the video I'm gonna tease you guys I didn't get any video recorded uh, footage of this but please check until the end to see what it is that I snagged this is a big goal of mine that I knocked off I'm very happy to get this purchase then immediately after that I decided to go back to the Beckett booth because I had some cards that were available uh, and of course the Beckett booth was slammed as always I really feel sorry for these guys they are doing a lot of work uh, really putting in a lot of hours uh, but here we can see the good. All right, guys. So I just got my order back from Beckett, and I'm about to open it up. Um, sneak peek. You know what's inside, which is good. So we're gonna see some good stuff. All right, here we go. All right, so we're opening this bad boy up, covering up the name and phone number. I don't want to get a bunch of random calls. So as you can see, I have one card that's a nine and another that's a nine-five, meaning that I'm one for two. And let's see which one we got. Boom. On. Unbelievable. There we go, guys. Finest gold refractor sub bump. We have a 2 out of 50 Otani Beckett 9510 autograph. Beautiful. So, paid $500 to get both these cards graded. This one came back 95. Well worth it. Uh, hopefully, I get some good results. Be a This card definitely made me happy, especially because after I went to the PSA booth to pick up my other Shohei Otani, I learned that I did not get that card crossed over. It cost me $2,000 to try and cross over Beckett 9.5 over to a PSA 10, and it failed again. So if you all have seen the history of this card, I've gotten a PSA 10 on this, or a PSA 9 on this card, uh, cracked it out, submitted it to Beckett, came back at Beckett 9.5, 
tried to cross it over here at the national because i thought maybe they would be able to give me a little bit of leniency or a second review and i got rejected so uh unfortunate to see that but off throughout the show i go uh looking at some more cards really trying to find anything that catches my eye uh, guys, there's just so much stuff out here. You know, there's over 600 dealers or tables or whatever, and you all can see just how packed this show is. There's Pelican Case kids everywhere. There's old people everywhere. What an awesome show. Guys, the hobby clearly is not dead. There are so many people out here. This is the biggest show that we've ever seen at the National. It's my first National. Everybody there was saying this is the most crowded, the busiest. And of course, this is footage from Saturday. Um, uh, and guys, they said that even Wednesday and Thursday and Friday were even busier. So uh, just unbelievable just seeing all the people, all the, the deals and the trades that were taking place. Um, just really, really, really fun stuff. So back to the PSA booth I went to pick up my last box. And again, I'm gonna show you guys what this order looked like at the end of the video, or actually at a separate video. So many good items in here, but this PSA booth was so well run. Such an awesome, awesome experience, you know, working with PSA folks. Picking up my last order from PSA. I just looked at the grades. The grades, there's gonna be some good stuff in here. Some good stuff. We're gonna go over them. But waiting on them right now. Um, the line is not that long. The show's starting to play out a little bit. Um, yeah, this has been a really, really, really fun show. I can't believe I haven't been to one of these previously. So can we show you all the grades? Now that pretty much concluded the rest of the, the trade show. So after that night, me and a buddy, uh, those back pages, a fellow YouTuber, guys, check out his channel. Uh, awesome member on Blow Up Forums. We went and hit up Gibson's right across the street. And then after that, it was trade night. So I don't have any footage from trade night. I highly encourage you guys to check this stuff out. We literally had people trading into the wee hours of the morning. We're talking midnight, 1 a.m. from at a hotel lobby thousands or hundreds and th uh, maybe hundreds and maybe thousands of people just trading non-stop it was such a fun night but you know right around 10 o'clock i became exhausted and i was like i've got to go i'm so jet lagged from traveling recently so next thing you know it is sunday morning and i'm going to give you my thoughts on what i'm going to be doing on sunday all right guys we are walking to the show this is day two of my national it's the last day on sunday I'm exhausted. I am so tired. I am exhausted. Um, it was a very long night last night. There was a trade night at one of the hotels here called Lowe's. Uh, they had the same trade night two nights ago, but it's literally like a, a sports card show that uh, is taking place at night. So you go from the convention center sports card show over to a hotel sports card show where the entire lobby is just packed with people. A lot of good deals last night, a lot of gold pool cards that I've gotten, um, amazing PSA grades, good Beckett grades. So I'm leaving the hotel, walking there now. Um, got about 30 minutes until the show opens up uh, before we can go in. So I'm gonna drop my bags off and hopefully we can get some good stuff today. All right, see you guys. So here we are walking up to the convention center and I really didn't have a game plan today. I had gotten everything that I wanted. I have the grades that I wanted. I have uh, my RCRs, you know, everything is pretty much done. Uh, this is gonna be icing on the cake. In the Starbucks line, getting my caffeine for the day, just per usual and waiting on the show to open up. Just really fun, just taking it in. This is gonna be a pretty laid back day. You know, very excited about uh, uh, my second day at the show. So uh, first, a uh, couple of showcases I looked through. This is an average uh, display case. You know, ran into one of my uh, blowout buddies while I was looking at some of these cards and decided to buy one of these Russell Wilson cards. Uh, Ultimate Duran, shout out to him. Uh, Rick, he says that he watches the channel also. Um, and I've known this guy for a while, just haven't really ever met him before. So 
really awesome meeting all the people out there who have actually watched this channel and um, introducing yourself. I highly, highly uh, appreciate that. Really appreciate that. It was so much fun meeting a lot of people out there. I apologize if I didn't get your names, um, but uh, really cool meeting a lot of people who have watched the channel and that I've interacted with. So nice meeting everybody and hopefully next year we get to do it again. Alright guys, I've been at the show for about two hours, maybe three hours, and first thing to notice is it's not nearly as crowded today as it was uh, the past couple of days. A couple of the dealers were saying that um, today would actually be a busy day compared to other nationals during their busy days, but uh, foot traffic is very light, which is great. This is a great time to go check out some cases. Um, bought a couple of things, uh, some cheaper low-end cards that I'm happy to show everybody. Um, I'm taking a little bit of a break, uh, may grab something to drink here and then be right back at it. So now I'm back in the Beckett booth and as I'm doing this, just giving you guys an example of like what the crowds are looking like around the Tops booth, which is right beside it. Lots of activity, lots of interactions taking place, lots of excited collectors. Uh, really, really cool to see all these guys just going absolutely crazy for cards. You see young people, you see older people. Just a really fun time to be in the hobby. It's just so much fun being here and just seeing this with everybody. Ooh, Come on, bro. You can do it. So now we're going to take a look at the Beckett booth uh, and also some of the RC RCR farms, which is really, really funny because you get to see the old prices of what the cost used to be probably like a year or two ago. This is really funny, guys. Look at these prices. Ah, oh, look how outdated that is. <laughs> that got me a chuckle. All right, guys, about 1.30 of the show and just got my Beckett box for my RCR that I dropped off. I've been at the Beckett and PSA booth like nonstop this entire show. So got the cards back and we're going to take a look. All right, let's see here. So you see some gold, that's good. And let's see here. So we have got, first up, the not so good. Um, this is a card that is off-centered, but clearly uh, I wanted to give it a try because in the event that it came back in 9.5, it's definitely gonna pay off, right? So this card is the tie-dye. Uh, Justin Herbert came back a nine, it's 20 of 25. So that's, that's me. This card is a card that I did not really want to submit, but I decided to submit it anyway, because I thought, uh, you know, if it comes back a 9.5, it's gonna be worth it. And even though I had some surface uh, dimples, this card ended up coming back gym net. And this is a Herbie that is number three of 10. So you all saw this on a previous video, from a pre-grading, um, I decided to roll the dice, and it came back 9.5. I'm gonna submit this. Uh, I'm gonna have it encapsulated, so it's gonna be a take back so that they can encapsulate this. And last but not least, best card. It's got gunk on it because this table has gunk. Uh, Justin Herbert, 9-5, 10 autograph. Beautiful, beautiful card. I was not, this is the card that I wanted to give them, and it did. I'm very happy about it. It's uh, card number to 99. If you take a look at it. Uh, corners look great. It does have that white spec there, guys. This is not a card that PSA will gem mint right now. Um, Beckett will, because Beckett standards 
they have been pretty consistent. Um, PSA stuff, all the people that I've talked to uh, at the show, it's hit or miss. Um, some people are saying that PSA is more lenient here than others are saying not so much. Uh, I've heard some stories of you know, people uh, not having good results, and I've heard some stories of people having good results. I had you know, 8 of 13 on a sub, and I also got a 1, or 0 for 1 on a crossover that cost about $2,000. So overall pretty good uh, results for both Beckett and PSA. It's been a great, great, great show. I did drop off one more card. Uh, a card that I bought here at the show and hopefully we will see some results of that that are positive. It's going to be a huge toss up guys. Huge toss up but fingers crossed we'll get something good. And with that my show was basically over. Now I did make one big deal at the end of the show. It was a Patrick Mahomes autograph rookie. Uh, I'm going to break that down uh, here in the video as well as some of the other cards that I got. So uh, you guys check this out and let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, whenever I got to the show, honestly, I was extremely, extremely overwhelmed. First show I've ever been to, walked in on a Saturday. My first objective was get, to get straight to the PSA line to get these guys back and then also go to Beckett so I could get some uh, cards bumped and also RCR'd and or slabbed. So I, I had a lot of different things going through my head and reading the message boards and hearing the PSA shut down earlier, my number one objective was to get these cards graded which they did, as you can see here. So we're gonna go through these in a separate video, but I do wanna show you guys, once I finally settled in and I started walking the, the tables and just getting a feel for what was out there, I started going in and buying some cards. So my number one objective whenever I went to this show in terms of things that I wanted to buy, I wanted to buy some prospects. And if possible, I wanted to get a couple PC items, which you will see in this stack. Um, but some of the prospects, obviously, that I want, Bobby Witt Jr. and Anthony Volpe. I know I'm probably saying these names wrong. I don't know how to say Anthony Volpe. Is it Volpe? Volpe. It's the Yankee shortstop who is in high A ball playing for Tampa right now who is killing it. So I wanted some cards of these guys. Uh, one of the booths that I stopped by in the middle of the show, uh, this guy had busted a ton of Bowman Heritage. And I love Bowman Heritage. I like Bowman Sterling, Bowman Heritage. Um, both of those brands are low pop brands, low production brands. Uh, Heritage is only available to Montgomery Club members. So Bobby Wood Jr. has a card in here and he also has a variation card. So he doesn't just have the base card, he doesn't just have the base chrome, and he, of course he has autographs and parallels. He also has a variation. So this guy had four variations and I picked up all four of these guys. Um, so I knew that he had busted a bunch of these open and I was like, well, maybe he has Volpe because Volpe is in here too. Um, I didn't see any in the showcase and I went through his dollar boxes and couldn't find anything. Um, I'm not the type of person to just come out and say, Hey, this is who I'm looking for because then the dealer knows and he kind of get, you, you don't get your, he knows what you're after and thus you're going to pay the price for it. So I like to find the hidden gems first. That way it's like, eh, I've never heard of this guy. Who's this Volpe guy, right? That, that's sort of my strategy, but unfortunately, this is not a guy who, who people are showing, getting put in showcases right now. Like People are not putting this card out. And that's because one of the biggest things about these types of shows is the hobby knowledge of this show is so far behind if you do your research. If you do your research and you stay up to date on prospects, and not, not just baseball, pro it's easier with baseball, but with baseball prospects specifically, you can find good deals. Volpe has been on an upward trajectory over the past month, but definitely over the past two weeks. I'm probably part to blame for that because I'm bidding up all his cards at auction. But dealers who have all these boxes that they busted open, they only know Bob, they know Bobby Witt Jr. and they know Adley the catcher for uh, the Orioles. They know the big name guy, Spencer Torkelson. You know, those are the big names that they have out of the, out of the most recent releases, right? So they don't know this guy, um, the Yankees guy, because he didn't play last year because of COVID, and he's not a big name. He didn't. He wasn't a headliner. So I did throw the name out there. I was like, hey, you got any of these? Because I was getting really sick of diving through these boxes and not really finding anything. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I got one over here. And sure enough, he had one. So 
Um, we were looking at comps. I knew the price that I had in mind on this. He was looking on his phone and it was kind of annoying me. And a lot of sellers were doing this. They didn't have their cards, not everybody, but, but a couple people, they, um, didn't know the price and they were looking up comps. So I was just like, you know what? I, $30 is a good price for me. Um, so would you just do 70 for all these? So I ended up getting all these for 70 bucks, which I was very, very happy with. Um, if PSA ever opens up a low end option, which it's very doubtful, that they will anytime soon. But if they do, these are the types of cards that I would be happy to submit at $20 a card, even $30 a card, depending on what the grades end up looking like. These cards are very hard to grade because this is almost the way the cards are made. If you look at some of the PSA grades online, you will see copies that have this centering. Every copy has that. So I wonder, I don't know if the grader is gonna say it's off-centered or if the card legitimately every copy is off-centered. Um, or it's going to be dependent on the grader. I don't really know how they're going to grade these things. Obviously, they're off center top to bottom. Is that how it's made? You know, whatever. Not really sure. But I've seen PSA 10s that have this centering before. So I'd be happy to send these off. Um, I think they're actually going to be really good. So you guys saw my interaction uh, with uh, our friend um, who is a subscriber to the channel. I'm so, so happy that I met him. I'm so glad that he said that he knew me and recognized me. That made this transaction so much, much better. Um, again, I knew that I wanted some Bobby Witt stuff. Uh, I saw this card and I was so upset. There was one that just ended a week ago, the exact same copy, uh, obviously a different serial number, same card. I was the second highest bidder in the card. I bid five thousand and one dollar, and it went for fifty one hundred. Um, so I lost. Now, as soon as I saw this card, I was like, "Hey, what you got?" And he was like, "Oh, one just sold for five thousand. I was like, "Yeah, I was the second highest bidder." <laughs> so I didn't buy it at first. I just looked around in the show because I wanted to see what else is out there, and I was like, "If this card sells, I'm gonna be mad." And about an hour or two later, I was like, "You know what? Screw it. I'm going back there and I'm buying this card." So ended up buying it. I, the dealer was great. Uh, such a cool guy, uh, very friendly, very honest, and, and I appreciate that. I obviously don't want to, every card that I buy, I don't expect to be Jim Mint. Um, he was, and I did not ask to handle the card or anything, but I did ask for him to at least uh, take the case off, so the, the mag case off, so I could inspect the surface. I can see clearly see it's off, off center, top to bottom, but I wanted to see if there's any surface scratches or anything, which there's one minor dimple on the surface, so that's kind of it. Just wanted to make sure there wasn't anything major wrong with the card. As long as it was a nine worthy, I would be okay with it. So we agreed the card would grade a nine. The card did not come like this. The card was raw. I later took this to, to BGS um, and I just wanted to get a quick opinion. It's $50. I mean, I paid $5,000 for the card. I can spend $50 to get it put in a nine um, you know, holder. Uh, to me, it's well worth it. Any card that's, you know, over $5,000, you need to have some opinion on it, whether it be slabbed or not slabbed. I would do this with any high-end card. So uh, bought the card uh, and then uh, struck up a conversation with him, got a, a, a good intro of him. So included that obviously in the, in the channel. And I'm very happy that I got this card. It's funny. There's going to be a story about this and who else owned this card as we go later on down into the stack, which is really, really funny. Shows how these cards were trading hands at the show. So, um, so got this card. And at this point, after getting this card and spending $5,000, I was like, you know what? I have arrived. I finally, I'm at the show. You know, it's well worth it. Nobody's going to fly to Chicago to buy a bunch of this junk, right? They're going to go to Chicago to get some big cards. So I felt like I got my first big card, a card that I really, really wanted. Um, and it was in a condition that I was okay with at a price that I wanted and from an awesome dealer. So got it. And then I moved on. I started going to the next showcases and I was ready to wheel and deal. So the next card that caught my eye was another card that I had on my watch list a couple of weeks ago and I just slept on it. I didn't put a snipe in, but I would have bought it had I been paying attention during that time. I've been doing a lot of traveling, so I didn't get a chance to look at this one. Didn't set a snipe and it is awesome. This is a first for me, guys. I've always wanted one of these cards for my PC, always wanted one. And it has been huge for me to get this card knocked out. I, I can afford it. I can sell some of the cards that I have. I've just never pulled the trigger. And this at this show, at my first national, finally pulled the trigger and got my first MJ autograph. 
Now, obviously, you can see immediately this card is not gradable in terms of something that I want to submit. I don't care. <laughs> I do not care. Guys, this is a Michael Jordan autograph on card. And the best thing about this is he is not in a UNC uniform. So this is 2011 good one. Upper Deck did not have a license at this point. So this is not a Bulls card. Obviously, Bulls is the best. But I want to take this out of its plastic so that way it's less refractory or less shiny. This card has a beautiful, bold autograph. So the way this deal went down, um, I wanted to trade for this card. Uh, I asked what the valuation was. He said right around $2,500. I'll give it to you for $2,350. That was the price on the card. Um, so I gave him a box of my cards, the stuff that I didn't want, and I wanted to potentially work out a cash trade deal. He pulled out, you know, a couple of things. He didn't like a valuation on one of my cards. The one card that he did like was a Bowman Sterling Vladimir Guerrero Jr. autograph rookie number to 75. And I put a valuation of 550 on it. And it, it's because it wasn't a gradable card. Honestly, the valuation probably could have been a little bit higher than that. But, you know, I was a, that was something that I was comfortable with. I only had around 400 or so in it. So I, I threw that in there. Um, he thought about it for a second, was looking for comps, couldn't find any comps because the internet wasn't working <laughs> and he countered with well how about you give me the Vlad Guerrero in two thousand dollars cash and I was like I really don't want it I'd rather just buy this card um because that's kind of like me giving away the Vladimir Guerrero for a price I don't want right I, I have this price I have the money I can just buy this card why don't I just buy it um so actually after thinking about it and I didn't want to be pressured by the dealer this is a something that everyone out there should be comfortable with. You should be very confident in your ability to negotiate. If you are getting countered with something that you don't like, be okay with saying no or sticking to your first strategy, which may have just been buying the card. Like obviously I wanted to trade some cards that I didn't want to get, but if it's, they're not giving me the value that I want or that I'm seeing out of the card, it's okay. Just go back to the first option, which is still a great option, which is buy the card. So I said, hey, how about I just buy the card from you? And he's like, yeah, 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 you can buy the card, but look around the showcase and see if there's anything else you want and see if we can work out a deal for this. So I looked around for a bit. We had taken up a bunch of time. I didn't really want to take up the, the dealer's time because everybody else also was wanting to make some deals and also trade some cards. So um, I just said, you know what? I'm going to stop by the, uh, a little bit later, let everybody else get some action. I'll be back. I tried to find him. I couldn't find him. I, I really actually did want to find some other cards in his display case to trade, um, but I, I didn't make it back to his booth, unfortunately. So bought this card, $2,350. Unbelievable. Love this card. I know it's not a Bulls uniform, but it's MJ, and it's an era from whenever he played in the Bulls, you know, in the latter half of his career. So you just look at this face, and it says a Michael Jordan Bulls face. It's got the earring. It's got the swag. It's a great autograph. Like, it's, it's beautiful. Got my first MJ, and now I'm ready to get my second and my third and my fourth, and eventually I'm going to have an exquisite RPA. They're not an RPA. Exquisite patch autograph on here. That is going to be my next big whale is to get an MJ autograph patch from Exquisite. Um, so keep keep an eye out for that uh, coming up. So one of the strategies that I did find out with this that, that I'm going to use on this card is, even though it's not gradable, I talked to a, 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 a new friend that uh, I met. Uh, I've talked with him online previously. He's a member of Blowout, uh, Ultimate Duran. Um, we uh, struck up a conversation on Sunday morning and, and chatted. Really awesome dude. Uh, it's one of the things, all these blowout members, we really need to have a big get together and, and meet each other. I met Eric, those back pages for the first time. We hung out for hours, had a blast at the show, really enjoyed my time with him and really enjoyed my time, uh, with ultimate Darren and everybody that I met, everybody who came up to me and said that, Hey, I recognize you on YouTube. I am so glad that you did that. That was awesome. I apologize that I didn't get everyone's name, but um, really, really cool to meet a ton of you guys out there. And I'm so glad that Ultimate Darren or Rick did that. Um, so really appreciate that. He said that one of the things that he does is he'll actually grade some cards and do the dual um, grade, uh, grade the card and also the autograph. So it got me thinking on this MJ. I'm probably going to end up grading the autograph on this card and not the card itself. So this looks like a 10 autograph to me and uh, it's a very low pop. So the purpose of doing that is to make the pop lower, right? So um, I actually might do that with this MJ. As soon as he said that, I took off to the PSA 
uh, booth after I had to uh, go to the Beckett booth. And unfortunately, I didn't make it by the cutoff. I was the last person rejected, or the first person rejected at the PSA booth on Sunday, right around noon. That's whenever they cut everybody off. The The new VP of uh, customer outreach, uh, I forget his name, but he was like, sorry, man, no more. And he gave me his card and was like, you know, if there's anything I can do for you, um, you know, just let me know. I was like, you can take my card. <laughs> but no, I'll end up shipping this in. I'll probably end up getting it graded. Um, this is a PC card. It's not going anywhere. I, and I love that. I love, I love that. So that was the big pickups for the first day of the show. Now, that this is where the craziness happens. So... Went and had uh, dinner with Eric, uh, those back pages. Uh, then, guess what? It was on to another sports card show that night. So the hotels around the convention were on fire with sports card shows. So there was an organized trade night that was really starting around 8 o'clock that night. And as soon as me and Eric walk into the hotel, there are people trading everywhere, everywhere. So... Um, I mean, kid, it was the Pelican case kids were everywhere and it was so much fun. So after looking at a couple of tables and not really finding much or not really being able to agree on any, any deals, came across a dealer who had a couple of cards that I was interested in. Um, so I gave him my box of stuff and in my box was a Mike Trout Topps Heritage Red Ink Autograph Graded Beckett 9.5. He was interested in that card. I was interested in some cards on his table, which I'll show you. This is one of them. Um, I put the value of 17.50 on my Mike Trout Red Ink Beckett 9.5, which I thought was a fair value. The only comps were raw, um, so I thought that was actually a pretty good value since it was one of the it, it hadn't sold, and I thought that was a pretty fair premium. The cards that I was interested in that I ended up striking a deal with. This is another big Bobby Witt Jr. So Bobby Witt Jr. Refractor Autograph number to 499. This was graded at the show. You can see the serial number here. Uh, serial number starts with six, so six three one. Uh, that, those are the um, national serial numbers. And this card looks great. Like it really looks great. I haven't really got a chance to inspect the surface once I take it out of the sleeve, but centered very well. The corners look great. Like this, this card looks very, very clean. Uh, last comp on this was $1,123. Then uh, I asked if he had any Volpe because I wanted some Volpe. And sure enough, and I asked also specifically, I was like, hey, is it okay to assume that any of these guys that are raw are raw for a reason? He's like, no, honestly, they're too cheap to grade and I can't get them graded right now because it's too expensive. Nobody wants to do that. So that made me even happier about uh, throwing this in. So um, I just bought a Volpe Bowman Chrome the night before on eBay for 250. So as he is pulling up comps, he says, "Hey, one just sold for 250." And I was like, "Yeah, I, I just bought that. That was me." He was like, "Well, I, I can put a value of 200 on." It. I was like, "Okay, that works." So what we ended up doing is we valued this at 200. We valued this at 1100. I had a valuation of 1750. Um, we ended up coming up with uh, a scenario where. Let's see here. I He paid me um, right at $400 in PayPal. So I got these $400 in PayPal. He got my Mike Trout. And that was a deal. It was awesome, awesome deal. Very smooth. He also had some other stuff, but I was trying to look at some of the other tables. That This is my only trade on trade night. Tried to make some deals with some other guys for some high-end cards to offload some of the cards that I didn't want. Didn't, uh, didn't, have any luck with that so that was the end of the night i was exhausted that was the end of day one and for first day of a show i thought this was a pretty good haul i got a five thousand dollar bobby witt got my first mj autograph and then i got some more prospects you know witt jr and volpe the guys that i was looking for so that was very 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 successful all in between getting some graded like i got graded cards coming at me left and right from Beckett, from PSA. I'm going to the booth back and forth, back and forth. Awesome first day on that Saturday. And that leads me to the second, the last day of the show um, on Sunday. So I was pretty content with the show at this point. Um, didn't really care about picking anything else up because I'd seen pretty much everybody's uh, booths, I thought. Um, you can never spend enough time at the show. You'll always find something if you dig around for it. So uh, first dealer that I found, um, I had a target price on these cards. I know that this is mass produced based stuff that, uh, people don't like, but honestly, uh, I like Otani's value right now. I really, really do. At least for these batting, uh, HMTs. 
So this guy had four of these sitting in a showcase and he had $4, $40 stickers on them. So I pulled them out and uh, I was like, hey, what do you take for all four of these? It's like 140 bucks. And I was like, perfect. Because that's $35 a card. That's right on what I wanted to, to pay for these. Um, so I ended up getting these for $35 a piece, $140. You can look at the comps online for PSA. PSAs are very, very high. I didn't want to, to send these off PSA. It's pretty pretty risky. But honestly, these are great to send to, I hate to say it, SGC. <laughs> these are perfect SGC cards. Uh, and also HGA, CSG. So these will end up getting graded uh, at, uh, relatively soon, um, I believe. Then next up, I came across a dealer uh, that had this card. Um, so I walked by his uh, showcase and I saw this and you know I wanted to inspect it. So after inspecting it, I'm not confident that the card is gonna gym, but it's got a shot. It's got a, it's got a shot. So the top edge has a little bit of white on it, but it's not every single day that you can find a raw and a raw Acuna Jr. SP update rookie that also has the potential to gem. So it has a little bit of stuff up here on it. It's probably not a PSA candidate, but it might be one of these other candidates for a different company. Maybe. Uh, we'll give it a try. But yeah, this card uh, had a $350 sticker on it. I asked, what would you like for it? He said, $300. It's like, do you accept PayPal? He said, no, I'll do Venmo. Um, so uh, I could do 325 for Venmo. So I did 325 Venmo on this. This is uh, pretty close to the BGS9 comps that had just sold. So I was pretty happy with it. Um, this is a gamble card. Um, I, I didn't take it out of the top loader. So who knows if there's anything hidden underneath it, uh, which actually we could do right now. Let's see. Hopefully there's nothing hidden under, he under here. And no, nope. the surface does look pretty good. So yeah, this is a card that could be a, like an SGC 9.5 candidate. Probably not an SGC 10, but definitely an SGC 9.5 more than likely. Um, so pretty happy with that purchase. Uh, it's a gamble, um, but we'll we'll give it a try. Again, you got to risk money to make money. So uh, then I found another uh, prospect uh, bargain box, which these weren't weren't really a bargain. I, I mean, I paid probably too much for these. So. A uh, guy had some Bowman draft and he had these out on the table. I think he had $8 a piece or three for 25, which that math doesn't really make sense. Um, <laughs> but he did have eight of these. So I asked him, what's the best price for all eight of these? That doesn't make sense now I think about it. It's actually pretty, pretty odd. <laughs> maybe it was $10 a piece and then three for 25. If I'm, maybe I'm misremembering. So I uh, got eight of these uh, Bowman uh, rookies for Bobby Witt Jr. for 50 bucks, which I thought was pretty good. Um, that's not terrible. It's a little over $5 a piece. So, you know, I guess it's over $6 a piece. So if you try to buy these on eBay, it's kind of tough to buy them for like $2 plus $4 shipping. So, I mean, me being able to inspect the cards that came from the same case, um, I was pretty happy with that. You know, again, if a cheaper grading option comes available, this is something that I would love to send in. I may even uh, CSG these, honestly, because um, even at $10 a piece, uh, plus me only paying $6, like having less than $20 a piece for these where they could potentially gym, I think that's a great buy. Um, not going to hit a home run, but still a great value. Then on Sunday, uh, I've graded a lot of these uh, Russell Wilson rookies. The dealer had two of these. This is low end stuff, but still there's value that you can get in this low end stuff. So Russell Wilson rookie was priced exactly where it should be because you know this card sells for basically $6, $7 plus shipping on eBay. PSA 10s are above $100 though. So they're around 120, 140, depending on when they're selling. So this card uh, had a $10 sticker and I was saw it and it looked gradable so i ended up buying it um i have a bunch of these that i just got back from grading i have some more that are at psa and you know whenever something cheap comes up i'll, I'll probably send this also so you know this will be added to a bulk uh grading um uh order or maybe go to csg along with some of these guys then last but not least my last pickup of the show I was ready to give up. Honestly, I was just walking around killing time for the last couple hours because, you know, I didn't have anything else to do. My flight was pretty late. Um, so I finally stumbled across some, another table and re-looked at some of the stuff. And, you know, this Patrick Mahomes really caught my eye. 
Um, I asked the, the dealer if I could take a look at it. Um, I didn't open it up out of its sleeve or, or anything, but I at least looked on the back. In the back for one of these Elite cards, it actually looked pretty okay. Um, now, I'm not going to expect a gem mint out of this card. These cards are very, very hard to gem. Um, you know, it may be something I send, submit to Beckett, possibly. But I, I thought that, you know, having a card this clean in a showcase that wasn't graded, uh, I thought it was a pretty good gamble, um, potentially, to take. So I asked him uh, uh, if there's anything that he liked out of what I had. Um, he skimmed through the box found a couple of cards that he liked. He found 2009 uh, Panini Limited Steph Curry jersey that I've shown on the channel. It's a card that I tried to bump and failed. I failed on my sub bump. It's 0.5 away from Jim. And then I also had a Revolution Zion autograph that was great at BGS9. It's pretty far away. Um, so he liked both of those. I put the Zion value at 900, which was a loss compared to where what I had paid for the card and graded. And I put the Steph Curry value at 2500 which was a gain for me because I only paid 1800 for the card plus grading. So, uh, of course, I tried to sub-bump that a couple of times, uh, or I tried to bump it uh, a couple of times, but it didn't work. Uh, so I have a little bit more than that in the card, but um, ended up getting this card for both of those two cards, and I ended up paying 525 cash, so uh, or PayPal. So I paid $525 in PayPal. Um, his way to get a, a Patrick Mahomes autograph, which I'm okay with this. I've graded a lot of Patrick Mahomes through the years. Um, you've seen a lot of Patrick Mahomes on the channel. He has really been one of the reasons why I've built so much equity is just grading the low end stuff, which has worked out well for me. Now, I wish I could have been the high rollers and had, you know, NT RPAs, but I'll stick with my Prism autograph that I have. And then also this turn of the century, which this has a very good track record for rookies, especially, you know, rookies and autographs. Um, you know, it goes all the way back to Tom Brady having a rookie from, from Elite in here. So uh, really, really cool card. Uh, and I'm very happy that I pulled this off in the last couple hours of, of the National, whenever the show is pretty much dead. So that was basically how I did all my deals and the thought processes behind it. Um, really enjoy the card i absolutely love this show i will not miss a show unless something drastic happens or something crazy happens i will not miss a national um that was so much fun one of the funnest weekends i've had in a while um really enjoyed my time enjoyed meeting all the people really enjoyed spending time with uh, some fellow blow up folks but also people who say hey i recognize you i recognize your voice or i recognize your channel you do a great job that that really meant a lot to me that um there's actually people out there that watch this <laughs> so really appreciate you guys um uh coming up to me and, and saying that you recognize me and also just awesome to talk about cards for you know 48 hours non-stop just so 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 cool so hope you guys like this always as always i appreciate the support always appreciate you guys watching and, and commenting down below so uh let me know what you guys think about the pickups uh if i saw you Please comment down below. Like, uh, if I interacted with you and, and you and you recognize me, or you know, leave a comment down below, as I'd be happy to you know connect further with you guys. So, all right, let me know what you think. We'll see ya.